Cell division is the reproduction of cells and is an integral part of the cell cycle. The cell cycle contains three major phases, interphase and mitotic phase, followed by cytokinesis. Although we consider cytokinesis the last stage of the cell cycle, it is actually a continuous process. In interphase, a cell prepares for mitosis and accounts for 90% of the cell cycle. It is broken up into three different phases, G1, S, and G2. In G1, the decision to begin cell division is made. In S or DNA synthesis, chromatid is replicated. Finally, in G2, the centrosomes have replicated, each including two centrals, and the cell is ready for mitosis. Mitosis is the division of somatic cells, which is every cell except gametes. In mitosis, the parent cell is split into two daughter cells which are identical to the parent cell. They contain the same amount of chromosomes as the parent. Mitosis is broken up into four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In prophase, chromatin condenses to become distinguishable chromosomes. Each of these duplicated chromosomes appear as identical sister chromatins joined by centromere, the center where two chromatins are most closely attached, and by cohesins, which are proteins that connect its arms. The nucleoli disappear and the nuclear envelope begins to break down. The centrosomes, now called asters, now move away from each other as the mitotic spindle begins to form in between them. In metaphase, the pulling of the kinetochore microtubules equalize so that the chromosomes are lined up at the metaphase plate, which is equidistant between the spindle poles. Anaphase begins when the centromeres and cohesions of each chromosome separate. Each sister chromatid is now considered an individual chromosome. Therefore, there are twice as many chromosomes as there were during metaphase. The daughter chromosomes now move towards the different poles as the kinetochore microtubules shorten. This is the shortest phase of mitosis. Finally, in telophase, two daughter nuclei form around the chromosomes at each pole of the cell. At the end of telophase, the nuclei resembles interphase nuclei. Cytokinesis, which is the last stage of the cell cycle and not part of mitosis, follows as the cell begins to pinch off at the cleavage furrow to become two daughter cells. This is the illustration of mitosis in an animal cell. It is very similar in a plant cell with a few differences. Most notably, a plant cell has no centrioles and only has spindles. Another difference is that in cytokinesis, the plant cells form a cell plate from the inside out to divide the daughter cells. While all somatic cells in living organisms undergo mitosis, another process is used for cells called gametes, or cells for reproduction. This altered process is called meiosis. Let us take a look at meiosis and see how this is possible. After interphase is complete, chromosomes are replicated into sister chromatids. Meiotic phase begins with prophase 1. In prophase 1, the material in the nuclear envelope begins to condense into long strings of chromosomes in the form of connected sister chromatids. Those that are homologous begin to line up. When the homologs have paired into tetrads, a process called synapsis begins. Synapsis, which only occurs in meiosis, is the physical connection of homologous pairs down the length of the chromosomes. During synapsis, crossing over of genetic material occurs, which is when two non-sister chromatids of paired homologous chromosomes attach to each other and exchange pieces of the chromosome arm, which leads to variability of the chromosomes produced. The nuclear envelope then begins to break down as microtubules from the poles attach themselves to the centromere of the two homologous pairs to move them to the metaphase plate. Metaphase 1 begins as the tetrads line up on the metaphase plate. The two chromatids of one homolog, connected by the centromere, attach to the kinetochore microtubules from the nearest pole. The cell now enters anaphase 1, in which the tetrads are separated. Meiotic spindle guides each pair of sister chromatids to their respective pole. The sister chromatids move as one to their respective pole, connected by a centromere. In the final phase of meiosis 1, the cells begin to reform as separate haploid cells, and the cells begin to split off from each other. Each set of chromosome may have one or more portions from the non-sister chromatid in the opposite pole. Once finished, cytokinesis occurs. After cytokinesis, two haploid cells are present. There is no interface between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now enter meiosis 2, the second cellular division in the creation of new reproductive cells. Every event in meiosis 2 occurs in both cells simultaneously. The first phase is prophase 2. As in prophase 1, a meiotic spindle begins to form around the chromosomes. However, there is no synapsis or crossing over in prophase 2. As both cells reach metaphase, the chromosomes are lined up on the metaphase plate. The kinetochore of the sister chromatids attaches to the microtubules of the meiotic spindle. In anaphase 2, the chromatids separate from each other, guided once again by the microtubules of the meiotic spindle. The now separate chromatids move toward their respective poles. 
In the final phase of meiosis, the nuclei begin to form around the chromatids as they begin to decondense. Two haploid cells are created from the original, making four nuclei in total from the parent cell. Cytokinesis occurs again within the two cells. As a result from this meiosis, four haploid cells with unreplicated and thus genetically unique chromosomes are created. This allows all sexual reproduction to produce an offspring with a different genetic makeup than that of his parents.